There's something about scary YouTube videos that always sets them apart from any other horror media for me. Maybe it's the lack of quality control or the immense amount of creativity that's displayed for all to see, but either way, these videos used to really scare me. Not that there aren't certain YouTube videos that creep me out now, but back when Creepypasta was in its heyday, everything was terrifying. Like, for example, everyone remembers Poochie and Pansy, right? You know, Scare Theater made an analysis video that blew the series up, and now they post remake episodes about once every two years. You don't remember? What do you mean you don't remember? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll teach you everything you need to know. By the way, my boy Toby Pasta made a video of his own inspired by the first video in this series, so check that out after you watch this one if you want. Oh, and thank you all for the support as always. It means a lot. Poochie and Pansy was a YouTube series first started in 2010 that revolved around, well, Poochie and Pansy. To make a long story short, the series revolves around an ARG where the whole purpose was to catch this thing. What is this thing, you ask? Well, I'm sure you can tell by looking at it. That's right, it's a Gangadiddle. Now, what does a Gangadiddle do besides vaguely sound like an Australian urban legend? I don't actually know. Now that I think about it, I don't remember the Gangadiddle doing much of anything. Maybe I'm just mistaken. Hold on, I I'll go check the analysis video really quick. 328 AM. Yeah, I still don't know. It apparently was a threat to the world, though. Anyways, I think that's enough of that. So, which episode of the entire Poochie and Pansy series did I pick? Well, that's simple, really. The oldest video on their channel, a video called A Special Announcement from Poochie and Pansy. The video starts off with some very pleasant and inviting music, really the type of thing you'd play for a small child or something. After that, we open up in this MS Paint field with Poochie, Pansy, and the witch. Which... Oh, brother, this guy stinks! ...is really weird because, and huge spoiler alert here, okay, so cover your ears, the witch... ...is the villain. <gasps> I know. Crazy stuff. Witches are actually pretty cool, though. We need more witch heroes, but that, that's besides the point. So, why are all these characters gathered here like this is a 90s PSA against, like, uh, smoking or something? We're here to remind you that sometimes you see scary things on TV. But remember, what's on TV is what's make-believe. When you go outside and look at the rest of the world, that's real. Well, I guess that's true. Unless the TV is talking about something that's outside, or is based on something that's outside, or is documenting something that happened outside in the past, but other than that, yeah, it's, it's true. But okay, all jokes aside, this next part genuinely terrified me so badly that it pretty much single-handedly solidified that this would be one of the subjects of this video. I'll do my best to turn the volume down here, but be warned, this is a little loud. All right, that is more than enough of that. I think I'll legitimately go deaf. Anyway though, the creepy imagery combined with the very loud and infinitely increasing tone was like the perfect combination to absolutely terrify every single cell in my body. After the horrendous noise ends, we get some audio that didn't make things any better. I'll just put a transcript up on screen here. The rest of the video is basically just them walking to the end of the hallway, but honestly, forget all that. Imagine you're a kid, right? You're watching your favorite cartoon or whatever, and you get a PSA video. For whatever, it could be anything. Then all of a sudden, all of that happens? You probably wouldn't watch TV for the rest of your life. Uh, speaking of things that scarred me for life... Ben drowned, Majora's Mask, and me experiencing... <laughs> ...the worst jump scare of my life. What do they have in common? Well, Ben Drown is a creepypasta based off of Majora's Mask, that much is obvious. But although the Ben Drown videos are creepy, they aren't exactly riddled with jump scares. Do I have a story to tell you? So this story starts off with Cleverbot, right? If you don't know what Cleverbot is, you probably just weren't watching YouTube videos from 2012 to 2014 or whenever it was that talking to Cleverbot was popular, but it's essentially just a chatbot. The thing that makes this chatbot especially interesting though is its relation to Ben Drowned. 
in the story i think this chatbot is hacked or invaded by ben or something i don't really know i don't remember and so because of that the actual bot itself can give the chatter some pretty creepy responses if hit with the right prompts because of this a lot of people made youtube videos actually chatting with cleverbot and trying to get as many creepy ben drown responses as possible me wanted to watch some of these videos as i would took the safe route and watched them at like i don't know 11 a.m on a pretty sunny day nothing could possibly scare me now i ignorantly thought as I began watching these videos, I stumbled upon one that I can't find or remember. If I do find it, the video will be on screen, but if not, sorry. Anyway, I watched the video, and as the person continued chatting with Cleverbot, I became more and more focused on what they were saying. Everything seemed pretty normal. And then, well, you know what happened next. I got a huge Ben Drown jump scare. It scared me so bad I almost flipped my computer chair over with me in it, and yeah, it kind of changed me forever. Like, if there's ever a video with some silence and a black screen at the end, I automatically expect a crazy jump scare now. So thanks, random guy that talked to Cleverbot. Thanks a lot. By the way, speaking of things that are outdated, does anyone remember this creepy video called, uh, My Sister? Or at least, that's what most people think it's called. So, around five years ago on December 2017, a very small creator called Nightmare Expo, otherwise known as Nexpo, yeah, I'm sure most of you haven't heard of him, but anyway, this Nexpo guy made a video analyzing a video called My Sister. This video was posted by a channel called Raider Dog, a gaming channel who seemingly was trying to blow up by posting creepy videos, considering they were sharing them a lot on Game Facts at the time. We can see that his channel trailer that was uploaded a couple of years after these shows us that this guy clearly has an interest in creepypasta as an online horror creation. The quality is less than stellar, but he shows interest in doing this. So, why on a gaming channel? I'm honestly led to believe that this guy made the My Sister video with some creepy masks. He did a damn good job at this, and since it didn't get the recognition that he wanted back then, he resorted to game facts to freak people out, since it would clearly be out of place on a video game forum. I believe that he wanted people to become intrigued, have a desire for more, and as a result, check out his channel. Now what would gamers do upon arriving at his channel? They'd notice that he... Ah... He has gaming videos. It's a genre that people from a gaming forum would take interest in, so they'd possibly drop a subscription. But alright, so why did I start off this portion of the video implying that this video isn't actually called My Sister? Well, because it's not. Yep, I know it's hard to believe, but this video is actually stolen content. I know, very uncommon thing that never happens at all. How do I know it's stolen? Well, because the pink comment on Nexpo's video has a link to the original video and the original channel, which is also pretty creepy, but that's for another day. So what's this whole video about? This video, which is actually titled Unmasking and Eating, was uploaded on May 17th, 2009 on a channel called Zaja's Room. All I remember from the video when I was thinking about topics for this video was the first 20 seconds and how much it creeped me out at the time. If you looked up the definition of uncanny, they could just link this video and it would explain everything you needed to know. Not only is there that consistent inhuman smile from the mask, but the person behind the mask also doesn't blink, which just makes it worse. It's like they genuinely told themselves to be as uncanny as humanly or inhumanly possible. One thing I'll say though is that the mask is genuinely impressive because at first glance it actually is decently close to a human. Honestly, if you took a screenshot and maybe a squinted a little bit, you probably wouldn't even notice that this wasn't just a regular person at first. If you can believe it though, this video actually gets a bit more odd. After getting up close to the camera, they take off their mask to reveal another mask, only according to the description, this one is made of foam latex. They then proceeded to eat with the mask on, and I can genuinely say that some moments here seem almost too realistic. And then they eat a banana very seductively, so I'm just gonna move on from that. Anyway, they then show themselves pulling the mask, and the way their lips move so naturally is both extremely intriguing and also kind of scary like imagine you know someone for years and in reality they've been wearing an extremely high quality foam latex mask that has like the perfect skin texture or something and then one day they just take it off right in front of you all right that's that's too crazy to think about i'm moving on so i'm sure at least one of you is familiar with creepypasta more specifically gaming creepypasta 
You know, something I've never really covered on the channel before. Something new and exciting and very, very unpredictable of me to do. Well, I'm not the only person to cover this genre, as you can imagine, and one channel that covered this genre while absolutely terrifying me was Tat's Top Videos. I mean, for me, these videos were some of the scariest videos around. You know how they'll tell you to watch the video and stop hiding in the comments? Look, I was the guy hiding in the comments when it came to these videos. I couldn't stand more than maybe a minute watching them full screen. And don't even think about asking me to do it in the dark. I mean, I probably wouldn't even do that now. This video contains flashing lights, scary and creepy content, disturbing violent and graphic images, jump scares, pop-ups and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Enter Top 22 Gaming Creepypastas from Taz Top's videos. This video is one of my first ever scary videos that I purposefully watched. Besides these, I'd only watch some ordinary gamers haunted gaming and creepypasta videos. And while Sonic EXE may be very funny now, unless it's Needle Mouse, it was not very funny then. This guy actually kind of scared me, okay? It's just like how I thought Tails doll might legitimately attack me or something. But alright, what actually scared me from this video? First of all, just the atmosphere. The editing is unnerving, the music is even more so, and the narrators, I swear, they gave them the perfect instructions to make things even scarier, at least for me. Like, hold on, I'll play a shorter segment for you as an example. Pokemon, buried alive. Buried Alive is a supposed hidden code in the original Pokemon Red and Blue versions. It replaces Cubone's mother as the boss of Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town. A battle would commence and show a horrific model of a rotting corpse reaching out of the ground. Buried Alive uses a number of high levels, so the battle can be extremely tough. If the player loses the battle against Buried Alive, he will exclaim about raw meat, followed by several lines of gibberish before proceeding to drag the player underground with him. The game over screen shows Buried Alive holding the dead corpse of the player. You may say that the ending portion there was goofy, a bit played up, maybe even funny. But for me back then, okay, this was the scariest thing I'd ever seen. I'm thankful that the only popular analog horror back then was the Wyoming incident, and at some point Local 58, because with some of the things that exist now, I don't know if I would have made it. Either way, these videos really creep me out at the time and are extremely nostalgic to me, so it's only right that I talk about them in this video. Honestly, this last video eluded me for a long time after I first saw it in 2017. I'm not sure how or why I first saw it, it could have been recommended, it could have been from Nexpo or Scare Theater or any of the other people I regularly watched at the time that talked about creepy YouTube stuff. The point is, the video stuck with me, as did the channel. What's the video called though? Cat Adventure. At first, this video seems pretty inconspicuous, with the video game title intro. Then it shows the cat walking through the woods with some classic Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time music playing in the background. Then a, uh, normal rabbit shows up in the background before his mere presence has clearly completely destroyed reality as you can see. Suddenly static flashes before the rabbit shows up again, which causes static to show back up. Then we see some kind of hollow husk of a bear cub or dog or something standing there which looks completely pleasant and not creepy at all. It twitches and then the cat invites it over to him. Don't know why you do that but that's his business. The point is, the dog walks up and eats him. After this, the cat wakes up in what I can only call a uh, purgatory wasteland where the music clearly has an ominous undertone. The cat avoids a Kaizo level worth of obstacles before walking into this trypophobia themed evil dog cave thing. I, uh, I have no idea why you would ever walk into something like this, but, but again, that's his business. Unsurprisingly, the cat is then quickly seen running out while also flailing its arms. I wonder why, since the cave looks so safe and unassuming. Of course, it eats the cat. Obviously. 
With one life left, the level finally turns into a cursed dog themed version of the first Super Mario Bros level. I'm sure you can imagine the cat makes a bad decision by not jumping over the clearly dangerous mushroom or running away from it. After this, the lives drop to zero and the cat is in a void with a bunch of creepy dogs who quickly gang up on the cat and eat it alive. And then we get to see this pleasant image. So that's nice. Smile Dog 2.0? I'm, I'm not sure. At the end, they close the game and the video ends. Honestly, I wish that this was a real game. I definitely have to play it at least once. Speaking of that, has anyone here ever wished that like creepypasta games were real? I always hoped I'd stumble upon a cursed game cartridge online or at a thrift store, but sadly I haven't yet. There's another video on this channel though that also creeped me out, so I'll get into that. This video is called Natsuki after the character of the same name from Doki Doki Literature Club, which just happens to be a game I really like. Maybe I'll even make a video about it one day. Who knows? I don't know. If you haven't played the game, this is kind of a spoiler, so just be aware of that. Maybe if you don't want to hear it, just uh, mute the video and watch something else for a bit so I can get the watch time. If you don't care about spoilers though, the one thing you need to know is that this video represents the game perfectly. Either way, the video starts with a goofy looking Natsuki that's walking sync to a song from DDLC called Okay everyone, specifically the Natsuki variant of the song, which the reasoning for is obvious. Right after a very unnerving violin sound plays in the background, Natsuki decides to warm her neck up, you know, just making sure to stay flexible, maintain that mobility. Her eyes also become corrupted and then she just kind of turns back into the pixels from whence she came. At this point when the screen turned black, I thought that maybe there would be a jump scare, but instead I was greeted with a strange moving mouth. That's about it for this one. Thank you.